Good morning. Welcome to Newswire here on this Thursday. Craig Mish back with you here for our next edition of Newswire. Every day, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern, covering the latest in new sports information, sports betting odds, as well as the very latest on legalization of sports betting going on across the country and some of the stories that come along with that. We have a very big one that we'll begin with in just a second. But first, let me tell you what we also have coming up on the show, the RBC Heritage is underway the next big pga golf tournament brady cannon will preview that as they tee off this morning in about 30 minutes from now kyle irving on the latest the national basketball association with the playing games almost completed some big drama coming out of those as well matthew waters from legal sports report will also discuss our top story of the day which does come from the national basketball association and a lifetime ban issued to a player in the nba john tay porter of the toronto raptors has been banned from the league after a league investigation revealed that he did disclose confidential information to betters, limited his, particip his participation with at least one game with the Raptors. So what does that mean? Essentially, he decided he wanted to come out of the game in order to potentially help sports betters who bet on the under on his props. In fact, a information piece was revealed about his own health to a sports better ahead of a March 20th game. And another better privy to the information placed an $80,000 same game parlay bet that featured unders on his props. And that could have potentially earned $1.1 million, according to the NBA. And Porter did take himself out of that game where he went under on the props. And unfortunately, the league now is being forced to investigate a situation where essentially they have a player betting against himself. 13 bets placed, allegedly, by Porter on NBA games as well, using an associate's online betting account. $15,000, $22,000, $54,000. I mean, this guy's playing in the NBA, betting against himself. Look at those props on March 20th. And look at what the result was. He only played three minutes. And so clearly there was some shenanigans going on. And the NBA found out about it and said, buddy, you're out of here. You're never playing ever again. It's sort of incredible to think that this could happen on the highest of levels in the NBA. Here are the January 26 props. The points, rebounds, assists, and made threes. And on January 26, take a look, he went under in all of those props as well. So the league doing the right thing, Adam Silver doing the right thing, banning this guy from the NBA. And we've seen a lot of people talk about this, former players in the National Basketball Association. My gosh, Shaquille O'Neal with some very strong comments on him on a podcast at first saying that he would have punched him in the face. Uh, crazy stuff going on right now in the NBA. But again, brighter stories ahead with the play-in games and the NBA playoffs starting now. Also, brighter news ahead for Caitlin Clark in the news again. She signs a new deal with Nike. She had been with them since 2022. And under these new NIL rules, getting paid once again. The new deal is an eight-figure deal and will include her own signature shoe. Under Armour and Adidas also made a sizable offer to Clark. And Steph Curry was with those meetings at Under Armour, but she made her decision to stick with Nike. All right. Now, in the NBA last night, there's two stories in one here. First of all, the Philadelphia 76ers edged the Miami Heat in the NBA's play-in game in the East. But the bigger story coming out of this 105-104 win is that the Heat is going to have to play their next game on Friday night to try and get in the playoffs without Jimmy Butler. Shams reporting this morning he has feared to have an MCL injury in his knee, hurting it at the end of the first quarter. He actually played the rest of the game and stayed in. But nevertheless, the Heat is up against it, trying to get back to the Eastern Conference and get to the finals this year, potentially without Jimmy Butler. And the head coach of the Heat last night, Eric Spolstra, said they're just going to have to proceed without him. We're going to rest up, treat up, uh rally around each other, up, uh, get ready for Friday, and again, embrace these competitive uh, games. So it'll be competitive uh, in front of our home fans, um, and then um, we're going to bring a, a, a hell of a game on Friday night, lights, um, and do this the hard way. You know, that's, that's just the way the deal is right now. Well, doing it the hard way. Now, with the 76ers winning, they, of course, move on to take on the New York Knicks. They're favored, by the way, in that series in the 2-7 matchup. The Chicago Bulls are moving on as well. They crushed the Atlanta Hawks thanks to Kobe White's 42 points in the game last night. 
Hawks made a late run, but the Bulls had the answer. DeMar Rosen also 22 points, nine assists to the Chicago Bulls. So uh, congrats to the Bulls for capturing another spot in the NBA playoffs. Now let's get to the latest in Major League Baseball. Former Cy Young Award winner Justin Verlander is set to return on Friday to the Houston Astros. And they need them. They're 6-13 and 13 on the season. Manager Joe Espada did not reveal a pitch count yet. But, of course, his first start of the season, he will be monitored. How about a Major League Baseball debut in the afternoon today? Jack Leiter called up to start for the Texas Rangers. They take on the Detroit Tigers. Money line about even on both sides there. Angels came back to beat the Rays yesterday. They won two out of three in the first uh, three games of the series. So uh, Tampa Bay is sort of trying to pick up one win if they can against Mike Trout and company. And also over at Fenway Park, Cleveland will take on Boston. By the way, yesterday's game between Cleveland and Boston, for those of you who say baseball is too long, one hour, 49 minutes. <laughs> How about the time on that game? Less than two hours. Uh, incredible. Let me go with odds real quick. Um, show you Rangers Tigers, by the way. Let's uh, take a look at that one real quick. Total of eight and a half. Uh, Rangers right now, as it would appear, a slight favorite for Leiter's debut. There it is, uh, minus 102 there on the money line. All right, uh, latest in the National Football League, once upon a time, you may remember this name, J.K. Dobbins. You may have played a fantasy league that had J.K. Dobbins at some point, and you know certainly his career checkered with injuries. He's signed with the Chargers. Jim Harbaugh, of course, coach there. So Dobbins is a new member of the Chargers there. Nikita Kucherov becomes the fifth NHL player with 100 assists. Connor McDavid, Bobby Orr, Mario Lemieux, Wayne Gretzky, all Hall of Famers. So he's in good company there. McDavid, not a Hall of Famer yet, obviously. Uh, all right, the uh, Coyotes look like they're heading out, heading to Salt Lake City. They close out their time in Arizona, the final 5-2 to two there, 28-year run in Arizona coming to an end. Coyotes never got that stadium built like they wanted to. And also going on right now is the RBC Heritage. It is underway right now. We'll have more from Brady Cannon coming up a little bit later in the program, and we will preview exactly what is happening with the uh, golf tournament right now at the PGA Tour. For those of you who are interested in downloading our Sports Grid app, let me show you how to do it. Just take out your phone, and you can scan this QR code that we have for you here. It gives you all the latest news notes, information, picks against the spread, and also will help you with the coverage of the NFL Draft, which is one week away from tonight. We got coverage here coming up on Sports Grid. If you want to know more about it, scan that QR code. It's got all the odds there, and I'll tell you everything who could potentially be drafted and all of our hosts talking about it as well. All right, coming up next, Kyle Irving joins us. We'll talk about what the Miami Heat can do without Jimmy Butler and should the 76ers be favored over the Knicks after now getting into the final field of the NBA playoffs. We'll also touch on some of the games in the East and West and this matchup that looks very intriguing between the Milwaukee Bucks and Indiana Pacers that will not have Giannis, at least initially, for the series there. All right, we'll take a quick time out here on Sports Grid. More to come on Newswire right after this break. I'll be right back. gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It's when he swung it easy at three-quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hit something full, he hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He's like, what are you doing? He's just smiley, happy, and a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there winning majors for the next 10-plus years. It's amazing. Did you say he was smiling or smiley? Only on Sports Grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. 
And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. We talked about the Otani story, this, uh, this interpreter, uh, Ipe, you know, clearly was a problem gambler. I mean, he would be identified as that and beyond. <laughs> Now, there are a lot of others that are out there. The timing didn't seem great. It seemed slightly tone deaf in terms of, you know, maybe now isn't the time to say it. But the sentiment itself, you have to agree with. You do, you know, there is not, there's only so much a sports betting company can do, right? Newswire, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. Kyle Irving is with us to go over the latest in the NBA with the playing games coming to a close on Friday night. And then the real thing, I guess, begins this weekend. Like maybe this is the real thing, I, I suppose. But Kyle will tell us his opinion on that. Uh, Kyle, okay, so let, let's sort of go back and then we'll go forward and we'll get started here with the devastating news that we got this morning, which is that uh, Shams reported this, by the way. I should add here to be clear that Jimmy Butler is going to miss what appears to be the majority of the playoffs, even if the Heat gets in. They lost last night, 105-104. So the Heat, by the way, did cover that game last night, plus the points, four and a half or five points, which is you know the more important part here. But, uh, Kyle, now Friday night having to play without Butler, I mean, I suppose they've done this before, and it just doesn't seem to matter, I, I, fair to say, who's on the Heat. They you just sort of rally but the idea of them getting back to where they were a, a year ago without Butler, I don't know. That that feels like a tough one to ask at this point. Yeah, especially with, you know, that potential matchup with Boston lingering in round one. And I know that Miami has had Boston's number over the last couple of years, but without Jimmy Butler, that series gets a lot tougher. Um, you know, I give him credit for trying to tough it out. They said that he played the last three quarters on this MCL injury last night. Uh, you could tell that he was struggling to move around a little bit. Um, but, you know, eventually the, the 76ers made the push they did and claimed that number seven seed. So, you know, now Miami has to look forward to Friday where they take on a Bulls team that looked pretty good last night. But I mean, everybody, you know, I think myself and you included, Craig, would look pretty good against that Atlanta Hawks defense uh, because they don't play yeah. any of it. Um, Kobe White had that 42 point game, uh, six assists, zero turnovers. He was incredible last night uh, getting to the rim. Uh, his jump shot looked great, taking a lot of pressure off of DeMar DeRozan. So I think that becomes a really tough matchup for the Miami Heat without Jimmy Butler. The player that I am looking at in specific on Friday night is Tyler Harrow, who took 27 shots to get 25 points last night. Uh, He was really inconsistent in the first three quarters of that game. He finally started to find his rhythm in the fourth quarter. But if Jimmy Butler is going to be out, the Heat are desperately going to need Tyler Harrow to step up and be that offensive catalyst that they haven't had in the playoffs the last couple of years because he hasn't been healthy. So, you know, you know Bam Adebayo is going to bring it on the defensive end. You know that the Heat are going to need somebody else to step up other than Tyler Harrow, whether it's Caleb Martin kind of gets back into the rhythm that we saw in last year's playoffs. But I do think Harrow is kind of the X factor uh, in that game against the Bulls if the Heat are going to advance and claim the number eight seed. Yeah. And we'll preview that game uh, coming up against the spread, but first let's, let's do the uh, 
Kings and Pelicans here because this is like the war of attrition game, I would call it, in the play-in. Uh, Zion Williamson is going to be out for uh, New Orleans. We know Malik Monk is out for Sacramento. The winner gets the eight to play the Thunder. And right now the Kings are a point and a half favorite on Friday night, total of 214. Uh, I really like the way Sacramento played, Kyle, uh, against Golden State earlier this week. It was one of the things I did get right. I, I thought Sacramento would play well. Uh, they did. I know they're obviously very good at home. I know that's a big part of of their team and their energy. But I don't know. I mean, can the Pelicans win this game without Zion? It seems pretty formidable. Yeah, I really don't think so, honestly. I, I like the Sacramento Kings on the road to get it done. I agree with you, Craig. I think, you know, the way that they played the other night against the Warriors was inspiring. Even with a bunch of guys out, Malik Monk, Kevin Herter, key rotation players, you have guys like Keon Ellis that stepped up in – he gave Steph Curry everything that he had. I, I feel like Steph Curry is probably still seeing him in his nightmares two nights later here, um, just from how well he played defensively. And, you know, the Pelicans, that was a really competitive game they played against the Lakers. Zion Williamson obviously had one of the best games we've seen in his young career in the first postseason game of his career. Uh, but, you know, they kind of lost their wind after he uh, came out of the game with three minutes left uh, with that hamstring injury. And now, you know, he's going to be out on Friday. And I think that's just a shot to the heart for the Pelicans, for a team that, you know, finally was somewhat healthy. You know, Brandon Ingram is also dealing with that knee injury that he suffered at the end of the year as well. And he was on the bench at the end of that game against the Lakers too. Um, so, you know, maybe he's not completely right, but it just feels like a shot to the heart for a team that was relatively healthy going into the postseason for the first time in a couple of years. And now they're going to be without Zion Williamson again in a do or die game. And you're going up against a Kings team that even though they're missing, like I said, key guys, potential six man of the year, Malik Monk, they still have their one-two punch of De'Aaron Fox and Demonis Sabonis. They still have Keegan Murray, who nailed eight threes the other night. He was absolutely incredible. And I like the way that he matches up with Brandon Ingram um, in that playing game. So I really do think that carrying the momentum after getting the Warriors out of the way, I think the uh, Sacramento Kings get it done. Hmm, I do too. I like the Kings. I don't know how far they'll go, but I do like them in this game too. Now the, the Bulls will play the Heat Friday. Let's just take a quick look at that line. The Heat still has to be favored against Chicago. I get that. They're at home. But generally, this is the these are the odds for when two teams are even at home. You're laying two, two and a half, three. Heat minus three at home, total of 209. I got to tell you, Kyle, this is one of those games. I live in South Florida, keep in mind, so I'm always going to be biased and was a season ticket holder for the Heat many years ago. Uh, this is one of those games I stay so far away from here because I, I'm from game to game, whether it's the regular season or even the postseason, I don't know what to expect from the Heat. I could see the Heat winning by 30. I could see them losing, you know? And for me, that if that's the case, that's my handicap. I move on to the next. I completely agree with you. This is a dangerous one because I also think, you know, from the Bulls fans that I know and you see on Twitter and everything like that, like they would feel the same way about this Chicago Bulls team. I mean, to string together two consecutive games the way they played last night, uh, I don't think that they would really see that coming from Chicago either. For, so for two teams that are pretty inconsistent, this does kind of feel like one that you would steer away from because – also with the Miami Heat, we've learned over the last couple of years, every time that you count them out, and yes, they don't yeah. have playoff Jimmy, but every time you count them out, they find a way to pull through and get it done. Somebody else steps up, like you said at the, you know, at the top of the show here. So, you know, I would also stay clear with it, steer clear with this one. I like the way that the Bulls played last night, but the Heat play significantly tougher defense than the zero defense the Hawks played the other night. So, you know, for the Bulls to string together two consecutive games the way that they did yesterday, that seems kind of far-fetched, but at the same time, you don't know what Heat team is going to show up without Jimmy Butler. No, but I'll be watching Friday night. Uh, you know, so this is the dynamic of the play-in that I know they created something fun. And, and, and look, we're talking about it here. But the end result is, I mean, Knicks fans have to be like, you got to be kidding me here. We got to play Philadelphia after the season that we had. Philly just cruised through the last two months of the season. Didn't care if they won or lost without Joel Embiid. Let's just get him back. Now they're favored to win the series. Now, again, it's slight. If you look at the money line odds, I believe it's minus 114. So this is a pick em series, but I, I don't know. I mean, Kyle, this is the dynamic to me that bothers me a little bit about the NBA. And I suppose Philadelphia could have been in the seven spot anyway, but you don't really have to, right? Like you just kind of have to get your way in there and it wouldn't shock anybody at this point if the Sixers stay healthy and win the series. Yeah, I, I completely agree because, you know, you look at the 76ers as a team that if Joel Embiid never got hurt, we're probably looking at them as a top three, I would say definitely top four team in the Eastern Conference this year. But they went on a serious skid after he went out with that knee injury. And that's how they ended up in this in this position in the first place. So now, you know, the New York Knicks, 
hey, you earned the number two seed. No one really expected you to do that. And congratulations, your reward is the reigning MVP, Joel Embiid, in the first round of the playoffs. And I will say, Embiid played well last night, but he looked gassed. Like, he looked like he was out of shape. He looked like he hasn't played, you know, the, the minutes load that he's going to need for the Sixers to advance in the postseason. So I actually do still like the Knicks in this series, but it's going to be a lot tougher than it would have been if, you know, they had lost on that last day of the regular season and, and maybe dropped down to the number three seed the way that the Milwaukee Bucks did, whether it was intentionally or unintentionally, uh, to take on the Indiana Pacers in the first round. So, you know, I think it's going to be a rock fight of a series. I think that does kind of favor the Knicks a little bit. I do think that, you know, between Isaiah Hardenstein and, and even though Mitchell Robinson has been dealing with an injury, uh, those two bigs, they might be able to disrupt Joel Embiid a little bit. Um, Jalen Brunson has been playing at an MVP candidate level. And, and yes. I do just kind of feel like this Knicks team has found a groove, even without Julius Randle, uh, you know, to get it done defensively, uh, riding Jalen Brunson offensively, and then, you know, Dante DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, different guys, OG Ananobi stepping up uh, on the defensive end to kind of pull that team together. So I do like the Knicks in this series, even though they are the underdogs as the number two seed. All right. Well, it should be fun. And uh, next week, Kyle, on the show, we got to have a lot more to dive into. And, of course, the overreaction to usually game ones of these NBA series is always fun. Thanks again for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your week. Thanks so much, Craig. Thanks for having me. All right. Kyle Irving of Sporting News. Coming up next, Bally Bet diving back into the sports betting universe. Did not see that story coming today. Matthew Waters will tell us the latest on that and the update on John Tay Porter being banned by the NBA. Don't forget. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It's when he swung it easy at three-quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hit something full, he hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He's like, what are you doing? He's just smiley, happy, and a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there winning majors for the next 10-plus years. It's amazing. Did you say he was smiling or smiley? Only on Sports Grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Talked about the Otani story. This uh, this interpreter, uh, Ipe, you know, clearly was a problem gambler. I mean, he would be identified as that and beyond. <laughs> now there are a lot of others that are out there. The timing didn't seem great. It seemed slightly tone deaf in terms of, you know, maybe now isn't the time to say it. But the sentiment itself, you have to agree with. You you, you know, there is not. There's only so much a sports betting company can do, right? Newswire. Only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers, it's automatic. It's every time, not not sometimes, it's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, 
you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports rage this late sort night. Of let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. Matthew Waters is with us, where generally when we're talking about stories regarding sports betting and some illicit nature of sports betting, we use the word allegedly. We no longer have to do that. The NBA has completed their investigation into one of their players betting against himself, which apparently did happen. Matthew Waters is with us. And we've been careful, you know, diving around the story, tiptoeing, I think is probably the best way to put it. But it, it, this is just really hard to fathom for me, Matthew, that a player could be this stupid. You know, I, I don't know any other way to put it. Like you're 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 a nat, you're a you're playing the light your dreams. You're playing in the NBA. It's like I cannot even imagine what kind of advice this guy must have been getting to uh, to not only bet against uh, himself and props, but to also give this information out. I don't know what's stupider to do that or to think you're not going to get caught doing that. I mean, you tell me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure we know which act is is dumber just yet, Craig. Yeah, it was for twenty two thousand dollars he threw his career away. That's that was his net winnings. He he was paid out around seventy six thousand on around fifty five, fifty four thousand in bets. Twenty two thousand dollars he threw his NBA career away for. And look, the NBA simply did not have a choice in this. Um, uh, Porter had to be made an example of. And look, I guess you can say the NBA got lucky that it wasn't a bigger name guy getting caught for the first time and doing something like this where you got to set that example. Um, but man, yeah, it's, there were just so many mistakes made. And it, it's it's hard for at least me to reconcile which exactly is worse. Is it Was it worse that he was giving out the information when he knew he wasn't going to be playing? Was it worse that he faded the Raptors in that one game? He didn't play in that game, but still, I mean, it's it's all bad. It's all a real bad look, right? But it's a great look for regulated gambling because it did what it's supposed to do. It caught it. It tracked it. And now he's out of the league. And the, for now, the bad guy is gone, the NBA can say. And everything is full of integrity and everything will be fine moving forward from here. Uh, you know, and that really just means, you know, we'll wait until we hear about the next time this happens. Because, Craig, these leagues, they are making it abundantly clear to these players about what you can and cannot do when it comes to gambling. And so you're right. It, it's hard to categorize this as anything other than just stupid mistakes because they he knew. He knew. Every professional player knows these gambling rules they make it very very clear and so um it's a shame it's a shame that he had to throw that career away um it's a shame that there was a black cloud cast against the nba for a little bit here um but regulated gambling worked the way it's supposed to we got it all tidied up and and figured right. out and uh we'll move on from here and we ha just have to hope that the next time this happens again be in the regulated industry and we can have all of those checks and balances work the way they're supposed to yeah it's uh you know the there's going to be some conspiracy theory video i'm waiting for it to come out on youtube or somewhere else matthew that uh this player was placed in this position to do this because he's an irrele irrelevant player that didn't matter and now Everyone knows in the NBA you can't do it. And so he was placed in this spot <laughs> to do it, to get kicked out of the league forever. And the NBA is like, well, see, this is what happens. Right. And thankfully, it was not a big player. But you, but as you said, that to me, the, the best things to come out of this is, number one, this is a no-name no player that nobody cared about. And two, you're right. Very good point on the regulated betting that they were able to capture this and find out. All right. Now, a story I did not have on the bingo card today. Bally Bet 
who I thought was pulling back from a lot of their uh, sports betting entities. I, I guess things are so good in Massachusetts, Matthew, is the only thing that I can think of, that they've decided to ramp up their mobile sports betting there. I, I did not think that they were a big part of the sports betting landscape in the future. Yeah, you know what, Craig? I don't know that anybody actually thought that Bally's was going to launch in Massachusetts. Um, as you know, the mobile market went live last March there, and Bally's has just been kind of sitting on their hands. Uh, they have the license, but look, Bally's has had a lot going on, right? They tried to build up their sports betting product from, from the bottom, and they failed. They had to write a lot of it off. They lost some money because of it, and it was a headache for Bally's. They had to pull back. Now they're partnered with Canby. They're doing things a little bit more simple on their side. But jumping into Massachusetts is a head scratcher because, yeah. look, Massachusetts is hot. But last month, DraftKings did over half of the business. They took over half of the dollars back. And FanDuel is right there with like another 30%. You look at Massachusetts, and it's where Better has pulled out. It's where WinBet has pulled out. And it's where Betway decided against launching so you have to wonder why is bally's doing this why do they want to basically pay a million dollars a year to go into massachusetts and not get a whole lot of share and i think what we have to look at craig is this is just a marketing play for them because right next door in rhode island they opened up online casinos right and so what they're able to do is they're going to be able to cross sell these players that they get in their database saying hey you know you only live 40 miles from the casino why don't you come down and it's not like this is something that sports bettors are not used to, Craig, because if you remember before Massachusetts went live, if you're in that Boston, South Boston region, you were going to Rhode Island. And before you were just driving to the, the state line to make your account and bet, you had to go to the casino before that and actually physically make your account. And then you were able to bet online. So going to Rhode Island to gamble is nothing new to people in Massachusetts. And, if you want to gamble, maybe the Rhode Island line is going to be closer than driving to um, MGM Springfield, which is in the, the center of the state, or uh, Encore Boston. Uh, if you don't have to drive through downtown Boston, I would suggest you don't. So it's a um, it, it's an interesting play what they're going on, here, what they're doing here. But I, Craig, I can't see any reason other than trying to boost the Rhode Island online casino business than why they would go into Massachusetts because Massachusetts is not friendly for any of the big names right now when you could, when you think about the, the death grip that DraftKings and FanDuel have on the market. And especially for a smaller company, Bally's goes into markets and only may not even get a full percent of the handle. So it's going to be interesting to see how Bally's does with this. Um, you know, they, they keep saying that they're righting the wrongs and they're making better decisions now and everything. And we'll see if this pays off. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a story, I guess that could continue if they have success there, maybe they would compound that and, and jump in somewhere else. I guess we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, Pat Evans is usually our predictor here on the show, Matt, but I guess I'm going to put you on the spot today because you are here. Uh, New Jersey looks like they're the next state that are trying to ban these props on college athletes and we have college football season which is closing in now believe it or not i mean we're almost at the summer and then by the time august comes people will have that opportunity again i guess i would ask you do you think that this is just going away do you think that we've seen the last of being able to bet on college player props and i i, I would suppose i think football would be next up to see if that ends up happening yeah, you know what, Craig? Um, early in this process, I would have said I'm 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 not sure. I, I wouldn't have been able to give you an answer on which way this was going to go. But now I, I really do think that more states are going to come away with just banning this and and taking it out of the out of the options. And I think a lot of that has to do with the way that Ohio approached it. Ohio released stats showing that like 1.35 percent of their total billions of dollars of business that they did last year had to do with these college player props. So it's a very small piece of the pie. And I think once other regulators and legislatures are able to see that and say, oh, well, that's, that's a small number. This is going to make the NCAA happy. You know, we can play ball here. And right. that's exactly what's happening in New Jersey, Craig. If you, if you look at what the, uh, the senator told us, all she did was hear that Charlie Baker wanted this nationwide ban. 
They haven't even talked to the NCAA yet. They, they, she, she simply just saw that Charlie Baker was calling for this and saying that it was a good thing for colleges and then introduced the bill. And so I, I think, yeah, I think if we're going to get a lot of knee jerk reaction like that, certainly this is going to be something we're talking about for a while. And then, like I said, I think the way that Ohio handled it, they're showing that, look, it's not going to be a huge hit to, to the bottom line here. So I, it's college rules and betting, Craig, there's always something going on with it. You know, Connecticut right now, you're only allowed to bet on UConn in Connecticut if it's to win an NCAA tournament. So you couldn't go in and bet on UConn to win each game in the tournament. You can only bet on them to say, you know, I, I they're going to win the tournament. But Connecticut legislators are trying to undo that. So some states are trying to take away college betting. Some states are trying to add more college betting. Um, I, it's it's one of those things where it's everybody is just going to have different rules for a long time. Yeah. And we go back to talking about the NBA, and Adam Silver said – this happening just shows how much we need federal regulation. And when it comes to these little issues like this that you see every state start to pick up, it's hard to argue with them there. But obviously, operators want nothing to do with federal regulation. No, and they want nothing to do with stopping props on anything because that's more money that they can make. But I got to tell you, in this big piece of the pie, college player props, I mean, I, I never want to eliminate anything. I'm all for just keeping it going. But it seems to me that right. this is such a small piece and an easy thing to get rid of to at least start the process of making these kids feel comfortable that they don't have to worry about their own points uh, rebound. All right. Great to catch up with you, Matt. Thanks again. Have a great rest of your week. Appreciate it. Thanks guys. Take care. All right. We'll take a quick time out. Brady Cannon previews the RBC heritage next. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It's when he swung it easy at three-quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hit something full, he hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He's like, what are you doing? He's just smiley, happy, and a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there winning majors for the next 10-plus years. It's amazing. Did you say he was smiling or smiley? Only on Sports Grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Talk about the Otani story. This uh, this interpreter, uh, Ipe, you know, clearly was a problem gambler. I mean, he would be identified as that and beyond. <laughs> now there are a lot of others that are out there. The timing didn't seem great. It seemed slightly tone deaf in terms of, you know, maybe now isn't the time to say it. But the sentiment itself, you have to agree with. You do, you know, there is not. There's only so much a sports betting company can do, right? Newswire. Only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time, not not sometimes, it's every time. Game time decisions. Luca. 
is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports rage this late night. Has let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back to Newswire Golf Time with Brady Cannon. It is Thursday. Normally, a Brady here on Wednesday, but there's still time to get in some bets on the on the RBC. I believe you could go on FanDuel, DraftKings, wherever you have sports betting legal. So Brady will have some tips on that. Uh, you also could read his columns on, I believe it's golf.com. You, you know, I, I read those every week because I want to make sure before he comes on that we're on the same page here. I'm asking the right questions. Uh, so Brady is with us here to uh, break everything down. And, and speaking of which, Brady, and we'll take a look at this. I want you to look at this and then comment. Uh, you know, the PGA Tour just dominated at the Masters versus the Live Golf. I know it's not PGA versus Live, and inevitably they're going to be together. I think that that's going to happen. But uh, Bryson DeChambeau, who had that great first day, that was the, the highlight of Live. As far as the highlight of the PGA Tour, it's Scotty, uh, Oberg, and, and Max Homa all under par significantly. And really, when you look at it, only Bryson and Cam Smith had great days uh, on on the uh, on the, the tour at Augusta. There, Patrick Reed was was one over, but they're, they're just never going to get this worked out. I guess like we'll still just kind of have this back and forth, and it just the big money grab that Liv was. I don't blame any of them, but I, I just don't see any advantage personally for me to be so engaged in Liv golf when these players are not even playing all that well. Right. And, you know, there's only a handful of them that I really pay attention to on the live circuit as well. Now, a couple of those players that I do like to pay attention to and Brooks Kepka and Dustin Johnson did not have good showings at the Masters. You mentioned Cam Smith and Bryson DeChambeau, really the only two uh, that were able to shine, unlike last year where they had so many that came out and, and maybe last year there was more of an urgency to kind of prove themselves. And I, I still think like you say, that competitive nature between the two tours exists. But at the same time, I think everybody, fans, players, betters, what have you, uh, wants this to come together and coexist somehow. Uh, I, I think it's hurting both tours. You know, you see the PGA Tour with all these major long shots that won to begin the beginning of the year. And, and then Scotty Scheffler, basically the polar opposite as the pre-tournament favorite, has been winning as of late, not a whole lot of in between. And you mentioned the live players not doing, not faring well, not playing that great. They, they've got to come together and, and see these players all in the same field once again. We'll, we'll get it uh, here next month in about three and a half weeks or so mm -hmm. at the PGA Championship. Interesting to note, if you want to make a little note in your master's folder there, uh, people seem to automatically want to bet Brooks Kepka when it's a major, and he'll be defending his title at the PGA Championship. But that is now six straight rounds, two rounds to finish up last year when he lost to John Rahm and finished runner-up, <clears throat> and then four straight rounds this year that he has shot over par at Augusta Ooh. National. And also Bryson DeChambeau, by the way, save for that one outlier round that he did on Thursday and was the first round leader, nine out of his last 10 rounds at Augusta have been over par. So, you know, Cam Smith looks to be a guy that just plays really well at Augusta and, and Patrick Reed as well. Other than that, it seems to be a little bit hit and miss. And I think for Bryson DeChambeau, it's really a course that gives him fits. You know, he was able to go low on the first day when some of the overnight rain softened up the course a little bit. And from there on out, when it got really difficult, you know, it, it was difficult for him as well. Yeah, no, it, it was. And not difficult for Scotty Scheffler, who was the favorite and continues to dominate the PGA Tour even more so maybe than John Rahm did over the last couple of years. And uh, Scheffler talked about his success at Augusta and the course difference coming up this week with the RBC Heritage at Harbor Town. When you're coming from Augusta, we were talking about today, because I think, is it 14 that's the long par three with the water? 
I think I think 14 is a par three with the water, and the green just looked so small. And I'm sitting there with a six iron looking at this small green, and Augusta, everything's kind of really big at times. And then you come here, and everything is really, really small, it seems like. And so I think it's a, I think it's a great golf course. I think it's a lot of fun to play. I think it's very interesting. I think for some people, um, you know, distance debate type people sh should, if they're ever looking at golf course design and how to combat people only trying to hit the ball really far, need to come here and do a, a case study on this golf course because it's really, really good. You got to curve the ball do both directions, and you have to control your distance. You have to control where the golf ball is going. It's not just a place where you can go go bomb it. A rare situation, as uh, as Scotty, you see in the press conference there talking about this tournament, where I think most people after the Masters, to be honest with you, Brady, sort of tune out for a week on the PGA Tour, but you cannot do that this week. Like, this is a very big tournament. All of the big names are once again playing, and some of them have already teed off. Let's take a look at the odds to win. Now, again, these were pre-tournament tee off here, so just keep that in mind. Some things have been altered slightly because of the tee times this morning. But Scotty Scheffler is about as big as a favorite as we've ever seen on the PGA Tour, even more than John Rahm was a year ago. Uh, Rory McIlroy, 12-1. to 1, Xander at 12-1. to 1. Ludwig Oberg, who I know that you're a fan of at 14-1. to 1. Cantlay, 16. And then long shots beyond that. As you, as you handicapped it, Brady, and you looked at this week, some of those comments that uh, Scheffler made, that factor into some of the handicap this week? They sure do, Craig, and, and he's absolutely right. You go from a big, massive property with big, undulated greens to a very flat, small, crowded property. These are the second smallest greens on the PGA Tour. So Scotty's exactly right, uh, you know, looking at these small targets. Um, it, it's really a polar opposite uh, of Augusta National. And you're also correct in saying that we have a loaded field. It's a signature event. You go from a major championship to a signature event on tour. So all the big boys are here. Um, but I kind of went a different route last week. As you know, you know, we were on some of the big boys like Oberg and, and Shane Lowry and Xander Schauffele and, uh, you know, Hideki Matsuyama. Uh, some of these major stars, the Masters turns out to typically be a chalky tournament. It was again this year, a guy that went off at, you know, plus 450, won the whole thing. Uh, Harbor Town is is a different, like uh, Scotty noted, and we've we've explained here, a different type of test. And I looked at a different type of player. I looked at shorter, more accurate plotter type golfers that are really good with the short game, accurate off the tee. You know, Russell Henley is a guy I'm on this week. Chris Kirk, Siwoo Kim, Tom Kim, uh, Shane Lowry again, who, by the way, led Augusta National, led the field in strokes gained approach. His putter was awful. And that really did us in there on Mr. Lowry. But the iron play was spectacular. That's certainly what you need around here. He's finished third here at Harbortown twice, one time ninth. So I, I went with a different profile of a player this week. And so far off to a good start. Siwoo Kim's at three under. Uh, Russell Henley at two under. Kirk at one under. Uh, the rest of my guys still yet to tee off. But so far the plan is working. Uh, but, you know, there's that guy Scheffler in the field again. And <laughs> the way he's going, Craig, I mean, I, it, it feels like back in the day trying to bet against Tiger Woods. And you're coming down the stretch rooting for Duvall and Sergio and BJ and Ernie Els and Mickelson. And no one could beat him. And, and yeah. it seemed that way with Scotty Scheffler at the Masters. And we might see that. for I, I don't think it's going to be this week. He's got the first child on his mind. He's just coming off of that Masters victory. Um He's certainly going to be good, I would imagine, but I'm guessing he won't win this week. But the terror he is on right now, he is very Tiger-esque. Yeah, it has been that dominant of a run here as he was favored in basically everything starting off the year on the PGA Tour. Let's take a look at the upcoming tee times here. I don't know if anything, Brady, catches your mind. We'll go to some of your outright picks, so maybe somebody factors in here. But uh, 11.45 a.m. Eastern, Lowry will uh, tee off. Patrick Cantlay also tees off at 12.25 Eastern. Ricky Fowler and Brendan Todd. Sun M. Harmon, uh, Oberg, who I know that you like, uh, McElroy, Morikawa, and Xander, 150 Eastern. So any of those names interest you in terms of your outrights this week? I know that you've got quite a few long shots on your board this week. 
Yeah, I, I took Brendan Todd, uh, you know, in the neighborhood somewhere between 80 and 100 to 1. I think he certainly fits the profile here. You mentioned Brian Harmon. Uh, Brian Harmon is absolutely the type of player I'm looking at, and he checked a lot of boxes for me this week, as did Cameron Young, who's already on the course at three under par through 13 holes. His odds are down to 18 to 1 pre-tournament. He was about 30 to one. I know a lot of people that like Cameron Young this week. He comes off of a very good finish at Augusta National, and he's really knocking on the door to grab his first PGA Tour victory. He finished runner-up a few weeks back at the Valspar Championship. This guy is one heck of a player and, and is off to a good start here. So I would keep track of him. Maybe he's worth an in-game play. Uh, Shane Lowry, I mentioned, we're on him again. Uh, this week, I, I think, you know, he's a fantastic player and a good fit, I think, for either Augusta National or Harbor Town. He plays Pete Dye courses really, really well. He's had four top 20 finishes at TPC Sawgrass, where you find a lot of parallels here to Harbor Town, another Pete Dye design. And then Tom Kim is another guy I'm on mm -hmm. outright. I got him at 60 to 1. Uh, I think he's somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 or 55 at this point. Um, he's had two really good finishes and only two trips to the Masters, a 16th place finish and a 30th. And he comes off of the low round of the day on Sunday when he shot a 66 at Augusta. So I think he comes in this week to a course that really ought to fit his game with a good frame of mind and probably feeling pretty good about his game, the way he's performed at Augusta National. He won at Sedgefield, one of his few PGA Tour wins. He won the Wyndham Championship at Sedgefield, and I think that is very much of a crossover course here to Harbor Town. So, uh, I, you know, the way it's going right now, you don't have a lot to choose from, thankfully. It's only a field of 69 players, this signature event, and no cut as well. So, Ooh. yeah, if you aren't in pre-tournament, take a look at it. And I actually took that approach this week, Craig. You know you were on board with some of my guys last week at the Masters. And I have yet to hit a pre-tournament outright this year. I've had a lot of guys finish second. But my in-game plays, including Scotty Scheffler at the Masters, I've hit about five of them, maybe six. So I, I, I lowered the risk this week on the gotcha. pre-tournament stuff and saved a few bullets for in-game because I've had more success. It, hey, you know, let's be honest. It's probably to pick. A, it's probably easier to pick a winner after you've seen two or three rounds go by than it is uh, prior to. Yeah, no, fair point. I mean, and you're watching Brady and, you know, some people are just looking at the scores and, you know, Googling leaderboard. You know, I've done that. I did that last weekend for round uh, three, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And the other thing, too, is is you can take a look at these tournament matchups and also maybe find an edge in some of these as we go. And one of them that you like is Cam Young this week. And why do you like Young's? Uh, is it just the fact that he's matched up against Wyndham Clark or do you like him to play well? It's a little bit of both. Good question, Craig. You know, I mentioned Cam Young, off to a good start already, had a great finish at the Masters, another top 10. He's finished top 10 twice now in just three tries at Augusta National in his young career. And the last couple of weeks, his big bugaboo has been putting. But the last couple of weeks, he's gained strokes with the putter. So the, the form is really looking good for Cam Young. Wyndham Clark has played here at Harbortown six times. He's never missed the cut but he's never finished better than 29th. I also think there could still be a little bit of a lingering effect from last week when he opened up his mouth and kind of didn't look too pretty when he started criticizing the live players and, the, and was he worried about them? And he said, no, they only play 54 holes. And it came back to bite him. He missed the cut at Augusta National. So I think he got a little over his skis there, maybe a little overconfident. And uh, we'll see how that transpires here. But yeah, that was kind of, Pro Young and anti Wyndham Clark. And by the way, Brady also likes Henley over Clark and Siwoo Kim over Thigala. Those are the other two plays. All right, Brady, have a great weekend. We'll catch up again next week. Sounds great, Craig. Thank you. We'll be right back. gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. 
But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It's when he swung it easy at three-quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hit something full, he hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He was like, what are you doing? He's just smiley, happy, and a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there winning majors for the next 10-plus years. It's amazing. Did you say he was smiling or smiley? Only on Sports Grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. We talked about the Otani story. This uh, this interpreter, uh, Ipe, you know, clearly was a problem gambler. I mean, he would be identified as that and beyond. <laughs> now, there are a lot of others that are out there. The timing didn't seem great. It seemed slightly tone deaf in terms of, you know, maybe now isn't the time to say it. But the sentiment itself, you have to agree with. You, do, you know, there is not, there's only so much a sports betting company can do, right? Newswire. Only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers, it's automatic. It's every time, not not sometimes, it's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. Of has let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Welcome back to Newswire. Thank goodness for insurance. At least that's what Jason Kelsey is thinking right now. Of course, Jason Kelsey, the brother of Travis Kelsey. Uh, Jason Kelsey, of course, a Super Bowl champion. Travis Kelsey, multi-Super Bowl champion. So if Travis Kelsey lost a Super Bowl ring, the good news for him is he would have another one. The bad news for Jason Kelsey is that he lost a Super Bowl ring and he does not have another one. Apparently, this happened in a bowl of chili. This is not made up. This is a real story here, folks. Jason Kelsey, offensive lineman uh, who just retired this past offseason somewhere in Cincinnati, was at an event and lost it in a bowl of chili. He said that he didn't know if his brother even knew that it happened. And apparently, he's going to file some insurance claim to maybe get some money back on this. I have no idea. But how this could even potentially happen with maybe your most prized possession uh, playing in the National Football League still remains to be seen, and why it was in a bowl of chili still also remains to be seen as well. But you certainly can read about the article there. It's over on TMZ if you like. Uh, I can relate. I, I do believe that there has been times, and I'm sure all of you out there have lost something over the course of your life that is a prized possession. But I have to say that I am very careful with my most important <laughs> prized possessions that are actually tangible to make sure that I keep them in the right spot because I don't want them to end up in some food. But not so much for Travis Kelsey or uh, Jason Kelsey, I, I should say. But congrats on your retirement. Enjoy that. All right, that'll do it for the show. Thanks again to Brady Cannon for coming on, talking some golf. Kyle Irving, of course, from Sporting News. Matthew Waters from Legal Sports Report. Our producer, Frank. I'm Craig Mish. Now, coming up next, we have the early line for the next couple hours, followed by Pharrell Coast to Coast at 3 o'clock Eastern. We only have a handful of afternoon baseball games. 
and no NBA playing games until Friday. So uh, stay tuned. Who knows what uh, the guys at Pharrell Coast to Coast have planned for you. But I'll be tuned in at 3 o'clock Eastern and then Game Time Decisions in Game Live. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. We'll wrap up our week tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, for our next edition of Newswire right here on Sports Grid. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow for our next show. Have a good one, everyone.